Thank you for having me, and a special thanks to Nick Ford for inviting me up here. Um, what I have to say, by the way, it's a small crowd, so relax. Don't get too nervous about anything. I have a lot of explaining to do. Try not to fall asleep, though. I have a tendency to put people to sleep. If you do, Cynthia's going to come around and wake you up. <laughs> right? She's gonna um, basically, I'll, go, I'll give you a little bit of history. Um, I, like a lot of people here, as I'm sure everybody up here is in the know, um, was looking for answers for the last 30 years. And I never really could find it. Everybody's talk shows and all these people are talking about all our problems, but nobody had a solution. And I kept listening. I was listening to Beck and Alex Jones and Rush Limbaugh and all these other people. And they kept telling me about the problems, which I already knew about. I didn't want to hear that. What I wanted to hear is say, who's got a solution out there? Finally, about three years ago, I think, uh, my brother had called me and told me about something he had heard. It's the National Liberty Alliance. He said, check them out. So I did. I investigated them for a few months, and I discovered that, damn, that these people have a solution to America's problems. All of the problems. Not just one or two. All of them. And the reason that we're in this mess and the solution to the problem is one and the same. As weird as that might sound to you, it's one and the same. And it's a three, three words. We the people. All right? This book, the Constitution of the United States of America, is trying to be buried by your government. Your government isn't even your government, but I don't want to get into that. Okay? That's... I'll give you something at the end of this talk that you might want to look into and find that out for yourself. But it's, it's not even, it's not even your government. Your government doesn't exist in the 50 states. It only exists in Washington, D.C. Um, having said that, I do want to tell you how important this book right here is. It's the reason this country is going down the toilet. And I'll prove it to you. That it's going down the toilet. I'll also prove it to you that common law and the common law grand jury is the way to go. And by the way, it's already a constitutional fixture. Nobody has to do anything. We're either going to, or maybe I should say I, no, I'll say we. We're either going to do it with the cooperation of our government, which I'm trying to do now very nicely, or we're going to come in with sledgehammers and hit them over the head because the people run this country not the government. And I can tell you why, if you'll bear with me, it's one of the few things I memorized when I was in school, it's the preamble to the Constitution. Okay? We the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union. Okay? Now I realize that we the people are not the ones who wrote the document. They're long gone. But we are the people today. This is a legal contract between the people and its government. So we formed a more perfect union, okay? Establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Okay? The people do and ordain this Constitution for the United States of America. Not the government. The government did not write this book. The people wrote it for the government to obey. Don't infringe upon my right to speak. Don't infringe upon my right to carry a sidearm. Don't infringe upon my right to assemble freely. That means you don't have to pay a fee. They're illegal. They're unconstitutional violate your rights, they're turning your rights into a privilege. I'll get into that a little bit later. Some of the things that we're going to do here, I'm asking Cynthia to read some of the, um, <coughs> excuse me, the excerpts out of the Constitution 
First, I want to start with the, and this goes before it, it's the foundation of law, which this is law. Something that's unconstitutional is illegal. All right, but I want Cynthia first to read from the Declaration of Independence an excerpt, just an excerpt, to further support what I'm telling you today. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whatever any form of that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or, abol or to abolish it and to institute new government. Now that just supports what I said. That's the Declaration of Independence that was <coughs> done in 1776. The Constitution came about 15 years later. But it's the foundation for that book. It's the foundation of law. And basically it says if the government is unruly, unjust, get rid of it. We, the people, get rid of it. It's our government. It's the government, I mean, I don't work for the government. You don't work for, well, maybe you do. There might be government employees here. But what I mean is the government works for the people. The people don't work for the government. They've turned that upside down. Now, any organization that you can think of, practically, I can't think of any other, is, a, is a basically a pyramid. That pyramid has the CEO, the president, the king, the queen, whatever it is, at the top. Then they have uh, executive board, in case of the president, the, uh, what do they call them? Cabinet. Cabinet. And then the people are at the bottom. What our founding fathers did is they turned the pyramid upside down. So the thick part is at the top. That's we the people. Oh. Question. Yeah. Is this the class that was scheduled for the uh, grand jury thing? Yes, it is. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, it is. Um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. That's all right. That's, my train gets derailed a lot, so I don't worry about it. Comes with age. Um, what was I talking about? We, we the people are at the top. The pyramid. Thank you very much. We the people are at the top, and underneath that is the states. The federal government's on the bottom. They were never intended to be big the way they are today. Of course, we all know that it's a global government. They're trying to take over the world. A few of these, uh, every, I've, I've read where they refer to them as elites. I like to call them inbreds because I think there's way too much of that going on. That's why they think the way they think. They're better than us. They know how to we should be living in all of that stuff. Um, anyway, having said that, I'm trying to document with you guys, both in the Constitution and I'm going to get to the Magna Carta too, where everything leads to we the people, and if we the people don't act, we're in big trouble. You don't have to do much, and I'll explain exactly what needs to be done. Um, but you have to be willing to, I guess, uh, perform your civic duty, and that's basically it. All right, with that, I'm going to ask Cynthia if she'll read from um, the Constitution again, the, uh, let me see, yeah, Article 6, Paragraph 2. That's the Supremacy Clause. This Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all treaties made, or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land, and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby. Anything in the Constitution or laws of the state to the contrary notwithstanding. Basically what that's saying is that this book is the supreme law of the land. Nothing trumps it. Every law that both the New Hampshire legislature makes, 
and the governor signs off on, and in Congress, the United States Congress, it has to be in compliance with this book or it's null and void. If you read Marbury versus Madison, it's an 1803 case that supports that, and it basically says that if you determine the thing is null and that the law is null and void, you can ignore it, act with impunity. And when it is proven unconstitutional, it will be proven unconstitutional from the date of its inception, not from when the court deems it so. Right now, I don't know, I could be wrong about this, but I, I feel comfortable telling you that every judge in America is corrupt. They all are perpetrating the biggest fraud in the history of mankind in this country. There were three types of law. Common law, which by the way I didn't know until fairly recently, to my ignorance, and it's all our ignorance. There's admiralty law, which is military law of the sea, and there's equity law. Equity law deals with contract. If you walk into a courtroom for anything, okay, there are some exceptions, but if you walk into a courtroom for anything, a judge is going to say, hey, Mr. Smith, Mrs. Smith, do you know why you're here today? If you say yes, you've just given them jurisdiction over you. Most of the people that are sitting in prisons today are sitting there because they gave jurisdiction to the judge that they didn't have to give. All right? Now, I'll further demonstrate that. I believe it says it in um, Article 6, Paragraph 3, Cynthia, if you want to read that. It has to do with um, the judges and their oaths of office, along with other politicians. The senators and representatives before mentioned and the members of several state legislatures and all executive and judicial officers, both of the United States and of the several states, shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this Constitution. Okay. And what that basically means is anyone, anyone who gets elected and draws their money from uh, the public trust, the public fund, has to have an oath. And that oath is to defend and uphold this book, the Constitution of the United States. If they speak against it, and I wish there were a lot of people here because I want to go on record. The uh, governor of New Hampshire said that she was going to veto this new gun law, that you don't need a permit. She's talking treason. I hope she can hear me around here. It's treasonous to speak or act against this book if you take an oath to defend it. To any politician. And as one of the representatives from the common law grand jury, I'm training to be an administrator, by the way, but uh, that, that hasn't happened yet. Um, I have every intention of going after people who don't want to live to this document. You want to live in China or some other place? Go there. Don't turn me into it, because I'm going to fight for my rights. I wanted to make that point because I believe it's very point. The judges, politicians, as a matter of fact, I spoke with a state representative about, oh, I don't know, five or six weeks ago. He lives in the next building over from me. And when I was telling him about this, and I gave him a copy of the Constitution, I gave him a copy of U.S. versus Williams, which I'll talk about in a minute, all types of documentation to support my claim. He never called me again. And he looked at me like I had three heads. I'm saying, you're a state representative? I mean, really, you have to know this stuff. If you don't, what the hell are you doing as a state rep? Uh, all right, as far as the common law grand jury, I'm going to have Cynthia read the Fifth Amendment. The Fifth and Seventh Amendment guarantee every American a common law grand jury in this country. A little bit of history before she reads it is that uh, in 1946, we, we did some research. When I say we, I mean the National Liberty Alliance. We determined that some progressives added footnotes to the Code of Criminal Justice Procedure, and they determined that the common law grand jury was obsolete. Obsolete. So they basically wiped out the Fifth and Seventh Amendment by declaring it obsolete. I didn't know you could get rid of an amendment in the Constitution by doing that. I always thought it took maybe a convention, two-thirds of the states, 
something different than just somebody writing a footnote in there, but that's what they did. If you haven't seen a common law grand jury operate in here, does anybody know what the common law, the primary function of a common law grand jury is? You'll be amazed, because when you mention grand jury, people go, I don't want to sit on a jury, Jesus. You'll want to sit on this jury. The principal function of a common law grand jury is to root out corruption in government. They don't sit on trials. They may. I shouldn't say they don't, but generally speaking, they don't sit on trials. They investigate corruption in government, and they hand down indictments. And when a common law grand jury hands down an indictment, the individual they hand the indictment down against is removed from office immediately, and they must stand trial. Nobody can stop it. Nobody. Not the President, not the Supreme Court, nobody. We the people have spoken. The solution to our problems is written into this book, the supreme law of the land. You don't have to elect a politician. Politicians aren't going aren't to help you. Look at I know a lot of politicians like you guys do, and they might be nice people, but the system is riddled with corruption. They're not going to fight it. You put a good man in office for the president or a good woman in office in any position, you need the support of the people. And if we don't get together and support the reinstatement of the common law grand jury, nothing's going to happen. We're going to continue to erode, we're going to continue to go downhill. So anyway, with that, I'll give Cynthia the, the mic. And uh, if you could, read the fifth and the seventh. Okay, the, this is um, an excerpt from the Constitution, Article 1, Section 3. No person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a presentment or indictment of the grand jury. And that's from Amendment 5. Basically what that means is what it said. Uh, in order for you to be held for anything, you need to have an indictment brought against you. Most of the people, as I told you earlier, who are in prison are there without an indictment. Their rights have been violated under the Constitution. This document that we give our government to protect us, they're using against these people. And I worked as a correction officer in Massachusetts and a special state police officer down there. And I can tell you, most of the people that were in prison didn't belong there. They were no different than anyone sitting here. Maybe they were selling dope, I don't know. It doesn't make them that bad. Last Tuesday, for example, a friend of mine, Jeannie, I'll tell you her first name, uh, Hillsborough County Sheriff SWAT team came to the house and evicted her. SWAT team, 18 members of the SWAT team. And I want to ask you, because we were all getting used to this, it's like, oh, no big deal. What law did she violate by losing her job and not able to afford her house? When did she become a criminal? Because she lost her job? Because she didn't make a payment to the, the uh, Bank of America, or whatever bank it was? We're not paying attention, that's a problem. We're not reading this book. We have to. If we don't, if I don't want well, I'll tell you about that later. Go ahead with the Seventh Amendment. I'm almost done with the Constitution. Seventh Amendment. In suits at, at common law, no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise re-examined in any court of the United States that according to the rules, then according to the rules of common law. That's probably the most important thing in the um, Constitution as it pertains to common law. The reason I say that is, it says no fact to try it. So no decision that comes down from the common law jury, grand jury can be re-examined by any court in the United States, including the Supreme Court. They can't re-examine it. Why do you think the government got rid of it? Why do you think the corruption is so rampant today? In order for us, we the people, to take this country back in a positive, peaceful, and legal manner, we have to reinstate the common law grand jury. I have some um, resource information here. Oh, and by the way, there is one thing I missed. Very important. An article, and we're not going to read this because it's way too long, but Article 1, 2, and 3 of the Constitution deals with 
the legislative, the executive, and the judi yeah, judicial branches of our government, respectively. And what it says in there, there are enumerated powers that we, the people, granted to our government. And we said, here's what you can do. And if it isn't in there, you can't do it. If you do it, you're committing an act of treason. You're violating the supreme law of the land, the Constitution. You can't do it. Shiredude.com